Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Caitlin and on this channel I upload all sorts of different content relating to true crime, education and psychology related topics. So if that sounds like something you enjoy and you haven't already, then please do hit that subscribe button and don't forget to turn on your little notification bell so you know whenever I upload a new video. And today I'm back with another instalment of my true crime week. So if you haven't already seen over on my channel, I've uploaded a different video every single day of this week and there's still a few more to come. So if you haven't already had a binge watch, then go over and do that. There's plenty of content for you guys to watch. Now, before we get into today's case, I do just want to do a little disclaimer here, just letting you guys know that the crimes of the individual we're going to be talking about in today's video are of a sexual nature. And I don't go into a lot of detail regarding the actual crimes themselves because I know that they are quite upsetting to a lot of people. So I just thought I'd chuck this in here. If that sounds like something you'd be uncomfortable with, then feel free to leave this video. It probably isn't for you. Um, and there's plenty of other videos for you to watch over on my channel. I don't want to upset anyone. And I thought I'd put in this fair warning here. Here. And aside from that disclaimer, I am going to zoom through my usual disclaimer that I like to include at the start of all my videos, just letting you guys know that I'm not claiming to be an expert in this case or any of the other cases that I cover over on my channel. I'm simply relaying the information I'm able to find myself through research of certain sources on the internet. And because only certain sources are accessible to me, it means I may get things wrong, leave things out or mispronounce things. I apologise if I do any of those things. I'm not trying to cause anyone any harm or an injustice. I'm simply working with the information that I have available to me. So with all that being said, let's just go ahead and get started discussing the case of a man named Malcolm Fairley. Malcolm Fairley was born in the year of 1952 in the area of Silksworth in Sunderland in the UK. He was one of nine children with him being the youngest of the family and it was known that while he was growing up he was particularly shy and reserved. But despite being a rather shy and quiet child, by the time he was a teenager, he started to commit a number of crimes that would force him to fall onto the radar of the local authorities. During his teenage years, his crimes would mainly consist of minor theft and burglary, but this was just the start of his criminal career. And because of these crimes that he'd commit in his teenage years, it meant that he spent a lot of time in and out of prison throughout his 20s. It's known that he'd first married a woman when he was still relatively young, but she went on to leave him once he'd started acting violently towards her. And when he then married once again, this marriage seemed to be slightly more successful and the pair went on to have three children together. Around this time, he'd been living in a place called Peterley in County Durham, but then in 1983, he was offered multiple jobs as a labourer in Bedfordshire, and so he subsequently moved to Leighton Buzzard. Over the span of Malcolm Fairley's criminal timeline, he was given the name The Fox and typically was referred to as such in the media. So it's reported that Fairley had carried out a series of burglaries in March of 1984, but his MO wasn't as simple as just robbing people's homes. He would typically break into people's houses while the individuals were out of the property and spend a significant portion of time inside the home. He'd collect blankets and pieces of furniture and piece them together to make a den so that he could do whatever he wanted to do inside the home without anyone possibly walking past and seeing him through a window. He'd then sit and watch TV in their homes and eat their food while they remained unaware of his presence inside the house. But following this string of burglaries in March of 1984, his MO appeared to change and his crimes seemed to escalate. On the 11th of April 1984, Fairley had broken into the house of a 74-year-old woman in Leighton Buzzard, and rather than her being out of the house at the time, she had been asleep at the time he entered the property. She had awoken at the noise of movement inside her home and found herself face to face with Malcolm Fairley. He had then attempted to attack and sexually assault the elderly woman, but she'd managed to fight the man off just enough for him to eventually run off out of the house. Following this incident, it's known that Fairley had then committed another series of burglaries where he'd entered people's homes and spent a significant portion of time sifting through their personal belongings and most specifically their photographs. Following this set of burglaries though, he had then broken into the home of a 35-year-old man in Cheddington, Buckinghamshire on the 10th of May. Whilst inside the home, he had managed to steal a shotgun and cartridges as well as over £300 in cash. But rather than leaving the property once he'd collected these items, he had instead waited inside the home for the owner to return. And when the man entered the property, Fairley had attacked. He had tied him up and then proceeded to watch a series of pornographic videos before sexually assaulting the man. 
When he then left the property, he buried the shotgun that he'd stolen from the home, but it's known that when he returned later in an attempt to retrieve the weapon, he had been unable to remember exactly where he'd buried it and he never found it again. He then went on to burgle three more properties before then breaking into a home in Tring in Hertfordshire on the 6th of June. The couple who owned this house had not been inside the property when he'd entered and as he sifted through their belongings he came across another shotgun and cartridges as well as a hacksaw. He proceeded to use this hacksaw to remove the barrels off of the shotgun that he'd stolen and this would be the gun that he would continue to carry on him and use while entering people's homes. But whilst inside this couple's home in particular, he'd also found a number of photo albums that he ended up removing some photographs from, as well as removing some clothes from their drawers. Three days after this burglary, he was known to have broken into a property in Heath and Reach in Bedfordshire. Inside this property, he'd made a den out of the blankets and the furniture that he'd collected from around the home and used this den as a means of hiding himself in the dark from anyone potentially walking past the window who could maybe spot him. He'd also removed the light bulbs from the house to ensure that the owners had returned home to complete darkness. And here he waited for the owners to return home whilst watching videos in the dark and collecting belts from dressing gowns that he'd found inside the home, and he'd also cut the telephone wires. He then took some food from the kitchen, made himself a cup of tea, and waited for their return, but when they did, he ended up fleeing the property, taking with him £130 in cash, an anorak coat, and a bag of peanuts. And that very same night, he'd broken into a house in Leighton Buzzard, but this time he had thought ahead and used the fabric from a trouser leg with cutout eye holes to create a makeshift balaclava and conceal his identity. When the couple inside this home heard the intruder, the husband had launched himself at the attacker in an attempt to protect his wife and his home. During the altercation, Fairley's shotgun was fired and this man had sustained a hand injury as a result, but following this, Fairley fled the scene. He did, however, leave behind the anorak coat and the bag of peanuts that were reported as being stolen from the home in Heath and Reach that Fairley had previously burgled. Fairley had not committed another crime for around a month following this incident when on the 6th of June 1984, he then broke into a home in Linslade. He entered the home in the middle of the night and found a couple asleep in bed and the pair awoke to find Fairley pointing a shotgun at them. He instructed them to get out of bed and proceeded to tie them up using clothing pieces and shoelaces that he'd found inside the home. Fairley then continued to sexually assault the wife, but when she screamed, he soon fled the property, leaving the pair tied up inside. And he struck again just four days later, this time breaking into the home of a married couple and their two children whilst they were all asleep. The couple had woken up to find a man wearing a homemade balaclava pointing a shotgun at them. Fairley proceeded to instruct the wife to tie up her husband, and after she did so, he sexually assaulted her. During the ordeal, the husband had tried to free himself and defend his wife, but Fairley responded by hitting him with his weapon. And once the assault was over, he then proceeded to tie up the wife before fleeing the scene. Following this point, Fairley focused his criminal activities on the area of Edelsborough and continued breaking into houses and just stealing various items. And then on the 17th of August of that year, he broke into a bungalow in the area where an 18-year-old girl lived with her 21-year-old boyfriend and her 17-year-old brother. When Fairley had entered the home, the woman and her boyfriend were asleep in bed whilst her brother was awake playing records. When the girl's boyfriend had gotten up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, he had then spotted Fairley wearing his makeshift balaclava and holding a shotgun. Fairley gathered the three occupants into the girl's bedroom and ordered the boys to lie on the ground while he tied them up. He then tied up the girl on the bed and covered her face with a pillow before leaving the room and heading to the kitchen to make himself a drink. He returned to the bedroom and assaulted the girl multiple times before leaving the home, taking with him a number of videotapes that he'd found inside the property. His next crimes were yet another span of burglaries, this time across Milton Keynes, before then travelling up to Durham on August the 19th. His journey up to Durham though had not been a straightforward one. He had driven up the M1 and then onto the M18, carrying his shotgun in tow. But suddenly, whilst driving on the M18, he'd reversed his car onto a hard shoulder and driven into a wooded area. He climbed out of the car and proceeded to walk across the motorway and across a number of fields before stumbling across a house in Brampton-on-Lee-Morton. 
couple inside the home had once again woken up to find a masked man pointing a shotgun at them. He tied the couple together by attaching one of their legs to the others and proceeded to assault the woman. When her husband had continued to protest the ordeal, Fairley had then forced the barrel of the shotgun into his mouth which had been enough of a threat to stop his outcries. Once the assault was over, Fairley took enough care to cut a square out of the bedding that he had gotten his DNA on during the assault in an attempt to keep his identity hidden. When Fairley had returned to the car he'd parked just off of the M18, he decided that he needed to hide the mask and the gloves as well as the shotgun that he'd been using throughout the crimes. And this had been an act which ultimately aided the police's discovery of his identity. As he attempted to drive away from the area after partially hiding the weapon and the disguises, he managed to reverse into some bushes which ultimately broke a branch and scratched off some of the paintwork off of the side of his car. The small fragments of the paint from his vehicle would remain on the branch from these bushes for the authorities to later stumble across. So from here he'd driven back to Peterley back in the direction of Sunderland and he proceeded to commit two more burglaries in the area. He then travelled to Leighton Buzzard before returning once again to Milton Keynes where he would go on to carry out a total of 11 more offences similar to those previously mentioned. And the search for the fox was massive with every resident in the local areas being so fearful to return home from their daily business to find this masked man brandishing a gun inside their homes. Many local shops had been cleared out of things like padlocks as the locals had frantically tried to protect themselves from this potential intruder and hundreds of police officers were sent out in the areas he'd been known to operate in and they were instructed to hide themselves inside houses, barns and any uninhabited buildings in an attempt to catch this man in the act. The victims of his crimes had managed to provide somewhat of a description to the authorities, despite the fact that he would disguise his face in his later offences. The police knew they were on the lookout for a man between 20 and 30 years of age, around 5 foot 8 inches tall with a slim build. He was described as having an athletic appearance weighing between 10 and 11 stone and having long smooth fingers. And this description obviously wasn't particularly specific as it could apply to any number of men but it was noted by one of the victims that he had a noticeably northern accent, possibly Geordie. When the authorities had revisited the home that Fairley had broken into once he'd pulled off of the motorway, they discovered a set of tracks around the home leading them through fields and towards the M18. And because of these tracks, they very quickly discovered the poorly hidden mask, gloves and shotgun covered in a pile of leaves. This discovery was paired with a set of tyre tracks indicating exactly where he'd driven to and from, and upon a closer inspection of the area in which the car was known to have been parked, they spotted paint fragments on a broken branch where Fairley had reversed his car and unknowingly scratched the paint off of the side. When these fragments were collected and examined, authorities knew they were looking for a British Leyland car in the colour Harvest Yellow. This information alone wouldn't be particularly useful to the investigators though as there were thousands registered across the country. But Malcolm Fairley had been on the list of individuals who owned such vehicles and a visit to his home at that time in Kentish Town in London was added to the list of actions for the authorities to carry out. And when a pair of detectives had turned up to his home in Osney Crescent, Malcolm Fairley just so happened to be stood outside washing his car. It didn't take long for the detectives to take note of the scratched paintwork on the side of the car and so they requested to search inside the vehicle. Inside the boot of the car, they found a pair of overalls with one of the legs missing and it turned out that this had been the trouser leg that Fairley had used to create his makeshift disguise. Other small details provided by the victims of the crimes appeared to match up with Fairley too, including the fact that one had noted her attacker had been left-handed and wearing a watch on his right wrist. And detectives at that moment had asked Fairley to place his watch on his wrist in order to examine which hand he would use and sure enough he used his left hand to place it on his right wrist. And at the time of his arrest, Malcolm Fairley had carried out a total of 80 crimes as the Fox. Upon being questioned by the authorities, he was very quick to confess to each of his offences but he was described as seemingly lacking remorse for any of them. He told the authorities that following the attack in Leighton Buzzard that led to one of the victims injuring their hand after his shotgun was fired, he'd never reloaded the weapon. 
He stated that this incident had shaken him, but having the shotgun in his possession whilst committing the crimes had made him feel empowered. And a quote here that I have from Fairley, he said, the gun is king. When I got the gun, I felt I could get what I wanted. And then on September the 14th, 1984, Malcolm Fairley appeared in court facing three charges of rape, two of burglary and one of firearm possession. Despite his confession of committing 80 criminal acts, the investigators had only been able to come up with physical evidence linking him to a select few of them. And in February of 1985, his trial began in the St Albans Crown Court, where Fairley was ultimately convicted and ordered to serve a total of six life sentences. He did launch an appeal in an attempt to overturn the sentencing, but later that same year, this appeal was rejected. So that is where I'm going to end today's video. As always, please do leave your thoughts and your case requests in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this interesting and I'll see you guys tomorrow for another video. Thanks for watching. Bye.